don't have drugs, they said. You can have fun without drugs, they said. Well, today we're going to be looking at whether that is actually true. So I live in Utah, where uh, <clears throat> most people are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. M members of that religion don't, don't drink, don't do drugs. It, um, and so a lot of the, the cheap and easy dopamine hits are not available to them. And so that leaves kids kind of in a tough place, you know. So like in my high school, for example, uh, there were kids who would crush s Smarties and do lines of Smarties. And that's just not where you want to be. And so um, today I'm going to be talking about seven mind-altering alternatives to drugs for fun and profit. Well, okay, probably just for fun. Now, I'm not talking about things like meditation. You're not here for that. You want the real scoop, right? You know, you th th not that kind of mind altering. You want to get you want to get trashed. You want to get wasted. Well, I okay, I can't promise that you'll get wasted on any of these, but they'll at least give you a buzz. Um, b before I launch into them, you know, I, I'm also not talking about you know wingsuit flying or base jumping. Those those do provide dopamine hits but that's that's not what i'm not what i'm talking about here by the way i i emailed my alma mater uh, brigham young university they have a question and answer board and i put this question to them i basically said are there any mormon approved highs that you guys know about and they responded saying that my question wasn't quote appropriate enough <laughs> so that just kind of left me on my own anyway about 25 years ago, a group of us were getting ready to fly down to Argentina where the food is notoriously bland. The night before we uh, embarked on our journey, anticipating a lack of hot food, we loaded up on hot sauce. We went nuts with it. By the end of the evening, one of our group members was laying giggling uncontrollably on his bunk bed. This is a smart guy. He went on to become a, he's currently a heart surgeon. And he was just there giggling on the bed for about 10 minutes until he came to his senses. So that's the first one. Hot sauce buzz. You, you legit can get a buzz off a of hot sauce. Especially if it's strong stuff like this. Dave's Insanity Sauce. Seriously, if you dab a toothpick in here, it'll light up your fajita to the point where you almost can't eat it. Well, I worked up a tolerance to this stuff. I was adding more and more until I got to where I could add a tablespoon of it to chili. Now, if... If any of you have tried this stuff, that's an imp that's an impressive amount. So I'd be there at work, have a bowl of chili, I'd add a tablespoon of that, I would eat it, and I would just sit there feeling happy and floaty uh, for five minutes, just basking in endorphins. That's hard. It's hard for that to become habit for me. I mean, you, you got you. Yes, you get a buzz, but man, do you pay a price for it? Um, another another one in a similar category is poison ivy euphoria. Oh, poison ivy is miserable. You get it and you get this blistering rash that goes on for five or six weeks, but the benefit of it, you run hot water on it and it feels amazing. Like, you feel sleazy type amazing. And in fact, some people give themselves scalds and burns <laughs> on top of poison ivy when they are uh, suffering from poison ivy. But trust me, just a, a, a few minutes of ecstasy in the shower is not worth six weeks of, of itching. I hate poison ivy. Um, okay, there's there's the runner's high. Okay, people are familiar with that one. A few years ago when I was doing <clears throat> a lot of long distances, what I found was after about mile 30, my mind would start to trip out a little bit and everything seemed just really epic and I would get euphoric and I would um, it would bring me to, to tears, which for me is kind of unusual just thinking about how lovely the world was and how great things were so um anyway i know what you're thinking I'm, I'm making you work too hard here we've got you know killing yourself with hot sauce um poison ivy running 30 miles let me let me make it a little easier for you nutmeg nutmeg you can actually have a mind-altering trip on nutmeg who knew the reason it's not popular is you you usually don't do it twice. I I haven't done it. So reading an article from Andrew Wheel, the dosage is pretty ridiculous. You need to go somewhere between two tablespoons and a whole container. So here's what he says. If you manage to swallow enough, 
The effects can be variable, ranging from a mild floating sensation, anxiety, fear, and a feeling of impending doom to full-blown delirium. So that's the payoff. And you may have to wait up four hours for the effects to kick in, and then they'll last for up to 48 hours if you swallow enough and leave you with gastrointestinal distress, nausea, diarrhea, etc. So it's mostly for, you know, the my smarty sniffing classmates, people who just are so desperate that they'll they're willing to try anything. Anyway, there's nutmeg. Nutmeg's a little easier for you if you can, I mean, if you can manage to swallow that much. Okay, here's a different direction. Shamanic drumming. Um, drum circles. Shamans and other folks actually go into a trance-like, mind-altered state from drumming. So go ahead, look up your local drum circles, see if they'll let you join them. They probably will. They don't seem like a very exclusive group. Okay, this this next one, this one's this one's legit. Holotropic breathing. I've actually done another video on it on it up here. Um, it's just a breathing technique, but people who have done LSD and holotropic breathing say the two are comparable. But long story short, essentially you you hyperventilate, and it to the point that it causes a, an LSD type trip. And they do it with music and, and other stuff like that. I haven't done this one either because it turns out that you know as I researched it further. What's causing the LSD-like trip is actually the hyperventilation leads to um, oxygen being unable to reach your brain. Um, and I've got videos on oxygen and other stuff elsewhere, but so but holotropic breathing does give you a legit LSD-like trip. So that's number six. Number seven, there was a poet, an Arab poet named Al-Mutanabi. I hope I'm saying that right, you know, around 1000 AD, and he's considered the best poet to have ever lived. Unfortunately, his stuff's all in Arabic, so I can't read it. And if, but people who read his stuff actually report going into a somewhat uh, trance-like, intoxicated state just from hearing his poetry because of, of how it's it, because of how it works and how it hits their brain and, and all of that. If there were ever a reason to learn Arabic, that's that would be it. So those are the seven. There's all of these deal with with dopamine. There's other ways to get uh, dopamine hits, like you know roller coasters or or um, novel things. There's a, a, a quote that I found while I was researching all of this, and this is one of my favorite quotes. It says, "A a rat or human with preferences for novelty will be more likely to do drugs and binge drink." A rat with preferences for novelty, you will be more likely to do drugs and binge drink. <sighs> I don't know what to do with that. Maybe I should go ask BYU and see what their opinion is of, of that. That's all I got. Like, subscribe, send to friends. Talk to you later.